Hi guys, this is Jeff at Slayton's Racing. This video is about how to fix the power valve cover oil leak. We get a lot of emails and calls about this, and I'm sorry, it's just taking me a while to get to it. And you might not even know that you have the problem if you have a big full coverage skid plate like a AXP or Molecule or uh, Emperor, one of those, you know, that really cover things up. It's hard, really kind of hard to see which, what's going on down here until you pull those off and pull the pipe off as well. So I pulled the pipe, skid plate, and this hose here so you can really see what's going on. And you can see this shiny spot right there. Well, that's where the oil's been running down. It's been coming out of this cover right about in there. Right in this area. And it's just washing a clean spot all the way down. You can see it's made a all the mess in there. Uh, this stuff up here, you know, that's from the pipe. That's not a big deal, that's normal. <clears throat> you can see it's spitting all over on this uh, starter cable on the frame, and yeah, it's making a pretty good mess. Just flash it in there. So from here, I'm going to take this uh, outside the Power wash it. I highly recommend you guys you know, clean stuff before you start working on them. I, I've mentioned this before. I see guys send me pictures and videos of them working on their bikes, and the bikes are just filthy. And it just makes the job so much harder when you're working on them dirty like that. Plus, you're getting all that grit and stuff into whatever you're working on. So, clean them up first. So, I'm going to do that next. Then I'll get it back here on the hoist, and uh, we'll continue on. Now I've got the bike back up on the hoist. I uh, took it outside. I uh, sprayed it down with some gunk degreaser. Let that sit for a minute or two. And I power washed it. I had this cover on when I power washed it. And then on the exhaust port here, I stuck a rag up in there. And then uh, after I was done power washing, I pulled the rag out and I hit the electric starter and just spun the motor over a little bit just to blow out any possible water in there. Although, you know, the water's not going to hurt a damn thing as long as you start the bike up after you uh, get it back together here. I wouldn't let it sit for days. But if, if you just complete the job, start it up, any moisture that's in there is going to come right out. So it's not a big deal. So then after I power washed it, I re removed this power valve cover. And I cleaned all this area here real well with contact cleaner. You can also use carburetor cleaner. I don't use carburetor cleaner around here. It's uh, Most of it has a very strong odor. And then it's also more, um, uh, I don't know what you'd call it. It's, it's uh, some rubber components, carburetor cleaner will kind of damage them. So I just use contact cleaner. Anyhow, clean this up, blow it out with air. I clean the gasket, and now it's ready to be uh, sealed up and put back together. So for that, I just use silicone seal, you, you know, just plain old household silicone seal. You can use the high temp stuff if you want. You can use the red, the black, the, uh, the clear. It does not have to be high temp. It can be just the regular. That's what I'm going to use. And I'm going to put a bead of it down in this area, and then I'm also going to put a bead right in here. So, um, you don't need to watch me do that, so I'm going to stop the video for just a minute. Okay, I've got the silicone seal in there now. I just put a bead of it around here, all the way around, in that bottom groove. And then I put a bead of it in this groove in the cover. And I'm just going to slide this on, it's going to squish out. And I'm going to stick some screws in there and tighten it up.
Now, I just tighten these up with my hand. I don't use a torque wrench. I don't use a ratchet or anything. I just snug them up. They're not going to go anywhere, so you don't need to worry about torquing them. I know you torque the holly shed, to torque everything, but if you want to, go right ahead. I'm definitely not doing it. Uh, I'm going to take and wipe off some of this excess silicone that came out. And that's all there is to that part. So now I'm going to put the rest of it back together. I'm going to put the hose back on, put the coolant in, pipe, skid plate, and I'm going to go for a ride. Uh, I'm not going to show you that part of the video. I think you guys can handle that. If you've gotten to this point, if you've struggled, uh, maybe get a friend to help you. But anyhow, uh, that's all there is to sealing, sealing this cover. And uh, it should be ready for a ride now. I'm going to go out and do that here in just a few minutes. And then I'll uh, finish up this video by taking off the skid plate and the pipe. And so you can see if it's sealed up or not. Okay, guys, I'm back from my ride. I went out and did about a 35-mile loop. And pulled the pipe off. I'm not going to pull the skid plate off because I can see down in there and see that there's no reason to take it off. It's, it's not leaking anymore. You can see there it's nice and dry. If you remember from earlier in the video, uh, this was a real mess down in here. So this little stuff around here, sometimes guys get all OCD about that. You know, this kind of stuff right here. That's just, that's nothing. So uh, if you have something like that, just ride your damn bike, have fun. So you can see, there is no leak anywhere now. Sorry. So just a quick recap. Uh, pull the pipe off your bike and the skid plate. And blast it with some gunk degreaser or some kind of degreaser. And power wash it. Or if you have, uh, you know, a good degrees here, you really can just use a garden hose. And then get to work. Pull the cover off. Seal it up. Like I showed you earlier in the video. Bolt it back together. Put your pipe and skid plate back on and go ride. Have a good time. Now if you're out somewhere, say you come to Colorado. You're in the campground and you notice, you just happen to notice that boy, oh boy, you got kind of a mess on the front of your cases just like I did. Do you have to worry about that right then? No. A little bit of oil makes one hell of a mess. So the amount of oil that was spilled out of, you know, that's transmission fluid, by the way, that comes out because I should have explained that a little bit better earlier. But the transmission oil obviously is down in this area in the primary case because that's where the transmission is in the clutch. And then it comes uh, up to this, uh, through this channel here where that rubber grommet is, up into the power valve cover. Oh boy, I'm gonna pour job there, sorry guys. So, you know, the transmission oil comes up through here, just a little bit of it. And then this is the vent for the transmission right here. So that oil that is spilling out on the front on these is transmission oil. But you know, these things hold uh, three quarters or more of a quart. And probably that was only a tablespoon or two on the front of my cases. So you could easily ride a whole week and not have a problem. So if you're out somewhere on a ride, a multi-day ride, and you happen to notice that, just keep riding your bike. Don't obsess about it. Don't stress out. Don't try to fix it out on the trail. Or you can if you want. If you want to fix it in the campground. But my advice would be just to chill out, sit in front of the campfire and drink a beer. Enjoy your, your evening and uh, ride the hell out of it the next day. I don't get too worried about things like that. They don't really phase me at all. There's plenty of oil in there. If you lose a little bit, it's not gonna hurt a damn thing. And, but you know, it does create a hell of a mess. 
So at some point it should be addressed. And I think I've given you a simple solution here. All you gotta do is buy some silicone seal. I think we've probably got it on our site, I don't know. Not even sure, but hardware stores have it. Walmart has it, every place has it. So just go buy some silicone seal and uh, get to work. All right guys, one last thing. Don't forget why you bought these bikes. Stop obsessing about every little thing that might be wrong or could happen in the future and ride your bike. Remember why you bought it. You bought it to ride it. You didn't buy it to sit around and obsess. You didn't buy ride it to, to worry or work your butt off on the damn thing. Ride your bike. That's the best thing you can do. And be a good trail ambassador. Don't be a trail goon. And uh, I think that's about all for now. Ciao.